Now, we've also heard a lot of other things about potential problems in the law. Let's go through some of them. A lot of folks are worried that not enough healthy young people will sign up who are now uninsured. Why does that matter? Because if you let the relatively small number of people with severe pre-existing conditions buy insurance at the same price as everybody else, that will run everybody else's insurance policy up unless you get a whole bunch of healthy young people to come in and at least buy those bronze policies, the limited policy, which will level out the risk pool for the insurance companies. So that's a legitimate. I mean, even though I'm however old I am, I still remember what it's like to be 27, and I was convinced I'd live forever and I'd never get a hangnail, much less have a serious accident. But, so there's a lot of worry about this. But a recent study by the Commonwealth Fund at least suggests that this may not happen. First, large numbers of young people, age 26 and younger, have already enrolled in their parents' plans. And interestingly enough, if I were you guys, I'd promote this as the, as, say, either Republicans are a personal responsibility party. There are more young Republicans enrolled in their parent, families' plans than young Democrats. <laughs> Second, the assumption that young people don't buy insurance because they think they don't need it isn't backed up by the facts. Most young people sur surveyed said they did want insurance but they didn't earn enough to afford it. The tax credits will allow a lot of them to afford at least one of the bronze plans. And I think if young people can afford the coverage, they should buy it and contribute to a well-funded system with lower rates if for no other reason than they will not always be young. <laughs> it's both the right and the smart thing to do. Second, a lot of people worry about the computer problem. I mean, think about it, you've got to have all these state and federal computers up and running for the enrollment that opens October 1st and runs to the end of March. I think it's remarkable what these state and federal officials have done to get the computer systems up and running. Now, there may be glitches, but so far there's no evidence to suggest that they won't be able to be fixed quickly. I, I've really been impressed just by what I've seen from what's happening both here and around the country. Third, there are people who thought that because of the small business requirement or the requirement to cover all employees who work 30 hours a week or more, that there would be a lot of shifting of employees from full-time to part-time to avoid the 30-hour requirement for coverage. So far, it hasn't happened. Since 2010, listen to this, since 2010, when the law passed, 90% of the employment gains in America have been in full-time jobs. In Massachusetts, where the law governor Romney signed works a lot like the Affordable Care Act will work, there was no appreciable impact on job growth the percentage of part-time workers or employers dropping coverage. So, so far the direst predictions for the adverse consequences have not materialized, and I don't believe they will. Now, this law has already done a lot of good. It's about to make 95% of us insured with access to affordable care. It has built-in incentives to lower costs and improve quality including lots of opportunities for states to innovate, and Arkansas is Exhibit A. You should all be very proud of what your representatives and your governor have done. we got to do this, because I will say again, the studies show that we are number one by a country mile in the percentage of our income we devote to health care costs and rank no better than 25th to 33rd in the health care outcomes we get. This is the country that pioneered innovation in every other area of our national life. You cannot make me believe that we have to tolerate this from now to the end of eternity. I think we will become more competitive and healthier if we do this right. 